This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the latest Kindle. I guess you could call it a Kindle 4. The Kindle 3 is now called the Kindle Keyboard. That's this one right here. We all know and love. And this is the $79 one. If you get the with offers version, it's $30 more if you don't want to see screensavers that have advertisements on them, though the advertisements often have good deals on Amazon and other places. But $79 bucks for a non-touchscreen e-ink reader with a Pearl e-ink display and a fairly fast CPU is just an awesome deal. And this is certainly going to be a threat to other e-book manufacturers. Let's take a look around the device. This is a 6-inch display here. Same 800 by 600 resolution as the Kindle keyboard or Kindle 3. We've got buttons down here. This is the standard D-pad that Amazon's so fond of. Also found on Kindle 3, Kindle 2, and so on. We have a home button, a menu button does what you're used to. If you've used a Kindle before, brings up menu options. Got the keyboard button that brings up the on-screen keyboard and a back button. And let's take a look at that keyboard. There it is, in all of its glory. This is obviously not a QWERTY keyboard, this is an ABCD kind of inline. And at first I thought, well that's going to be awkward if you're used to the layout of a QWERTY keyboard. But since you can't actually touch the thing, well, it, I, I do find it's easier that it's an ABC kind of format. And yes, you can, instead of having to go all the way over and wrap around, you can just go this way. Say, I want to get back to that side. You can do that. So you've got all your letters and your numbers here. And obviously, if you're a big time note taker, this is not going to appeal to you. This is a very tedious way to enter text. If you rarely had any use for that keyboard that's hanging like an appendage on the Kindle 3, Kindle keyboard model, then this will probably suit you fine. The only time you'll have to bring it up is to go to location numbers or page numbers, obviously using the numbers up here, or if you're actually going to use the in-store shopping experience on the device and you want to search for a book. Of course, there's the built-in web browser, too, which has a bunch of bookmarks, and once you enter your URLs, you can bookmark them, so you don't have to use the keyboard again, but that, that could be another little bundle of joy there if you have to enter in a long URL using this keyboard. I mean, it's doable, and gee... You know, if you don't use it that often, it's fine. But again, if, if you're a heavy keyboard user, you're going to want to stick with the Kindle 3 or Kindle Keyboard, is now called, or the Kindle Touch when it's available at the end of November. And that will have a touchscreen, on screen keyboard, much like the Sony Readers and the Nook Simple Touch. Take a look around the device. I can tell you, it looks a lot better in person than it does in Amazon's pictures. It, the front might not be hugely inspiring, but it's not bad. It's a mid-gray. The darker bezel doesn't do as much to show off the e-ink because it's coming closer to the gray of an e-ink display versus the black display, or almost black, that's used on the Kindle 3, but it looks fine. And you've got a little black border here to try to give you a sense of increased contrast for the display. Clever there. And here's your page turn buttons on both sides. They're really teeny and hard to see, and they're beveled. And same thing replicate on this side, just like the Kindle 3 does. And I actually find them to be an improvement because with the Kindle 3, every time I picked it up by its sides, I was accidentally changing pages. That doesn't happen here. Given that they're smaller and they're on the bevel, holding it by its side, you're never going to accidentally change pages. Yay. One thing to note is the bezel is quite small compared to the previous Kindle. You can see here, so those of you with big hands or big thumbs, there's less area to wrap around and hold on to, so you actually might find that less comfortable. And it's also noticeably lighter. This is 6 ounces for the new little $79 Kindle versus 8.5 ounces for the Kindle keyboard. So with 6 ounces, you're talking the weight of a, you know, a good-sized smartphone. That's all this thing weighs. Amazing. The sides have a nice bevel on them. If you put it upside down, you can see it again, or curve. So it makes it look a little thinner than it is. It is pretty thin, not quite as thin as the Kindle with keyboard, but very thin. Here's your micro USB port for charging. A charger is no longer included with these guys thanks to the budget pricing. So you're going to plug it into your PC to charge, or you can just use most cell phone, smartphone, US, micro USB chargers with this too. This is the power button. No, no more slider. I actually like the push button better. Just the page turn buttons here, and nothing up top. It's got a nice curvy look to it. It's attractive on the back. And this is a kind of soft touch finish, so it's reasonably easy to grip, does not show fingerprints. Again, a lighter color than the Kindle with keyboard, except for on the edges where they're about the same. 
You can see the big old speaker grill here for the Kindle 3 because, well, it has an audio player and it has built-in speakers. This has no audio player. If you want audio player, you're going to have to get the Kindle keyboard or the Kindle Touch Edition, which does have audio player, does Audible, does MP3, all that kind of thing. In terms of display quality, the Pearl Ink display is good. as high contrast. It has 16 shades of gray. I would say it has a slight bit less of glare than the, the Kindle 3. Not that either of these is very glary, certainly compared to gloss LCD displays they don't, but seems to me a bit less. In terms of contrast and whiteness of the background, you know, there's always a little variety just from one to the other. If you have two Kindle 3s, I would say they're very similar, but my Kindle 3 may be a little bit whiter than this Kindle 4 or $79 Kindle, or whatever it is we're going to be calling this Kindle now. Blacks are just as black on both of them, and the, the big change is really the refresh. So with this is the flash to black that we're used to seeing here going on. And on this one, that's about the same, right? But if you go into a book, Notice how it's not doing that. It's only going to refresh and completely black out the screen every six pages. There was that flash to black. What the big difference is, we've seen that also on the Nook Touch and on the Kobo Touch readers. And it, it's a great idea because a lot of folks hate that flash to black. and It is distracting a bit. But it left a kind of five o'clock shadow of text that didn't get fully erased. Now, Amazon has done a really good job here. And you can see there's a lot of white space around, so it becomes apparent there's much five o'clock shadow. And, there isn't really, per se, any residue of text that I can see, or it's very, very faint. So, definitely good going. I mean, with, with the Nook and the Kobo, they actually had to add settings to allow you to control how often it refreshes, because some people couldn't stand that kind of graying over as little bits of text could litter the screen. And it's just not a problem here. So, really nice, really good, and perfect for you folks who just hate that flash to black. You won't be seeing it, except for every sixth page, when in a book. Now, when you're in a book, the experience is pretty much like any Kindle here. You, you just, you've got your text here. If you want to get a definition, the dictionary is included, and you can see also an option for adding highlights. And if we want a full definition of that word, we just press in the D-pad, and we can either get a full definition, start highlighting, create a note, or cancel. In this case, we're going to go for that definition. And there's our definition. This does not have the new x-ray feature that the Kindle Touch is going to have where it actually looks stuff up on the Wikipedia for you. It's just going to use a straight dictionary. In terms of other settings, again, there's the turning your wireless on and off. It has Wi-Fi, 802.11, BGN. It's full N, not just in BG compatibility mode like the last generation Kindle. You can shop in the store. You can change your font. That's, that's one thing I missed the keyboard for, because you could just hit the little font control button on the keyboard to get to this without having to do clicks in the menu. But you've got the same options over here, type, typeface, regular condensed, serif, line spacing, words per line, screen rotation, supports four-way rotation, and many text sizes, obviously. And if you want to bookmark something, you're going to use the menu, and then you're going to hit add bookmark. No little keyboard shortcut for that one either. You can search the book, you can get a book description, sync to for this red page, do the old popular notes and highlights thing, and view any notes and marks that you have. So pretty much standard Kindle stuff there. And if you want to go to location, I'm just going to use the on-screen keyboard. So PDF speed on this is a little bit faster than the Kindle 3, though once the Kindle 3 gets the document open and index and caches it, that it catches up again. In terms of features in the PDF reader, you can see we've got go to, and you get to act, actually enter a page number, choose beginning, cover, or end. Again, pretty standard Kindle stuff. You can search the document, you can add a bookmark, you can place the cursor in the page. So let's say you want to add a highlight right by the handlebars there. And you could start either a highlight, create a note, which we'll do. 
I'll cancel out of it. Open up the on-screen keyboard and And then you can save the note. Not super expedient, but again, this is not really designed for people who do want to use that keyboard a lot. What about if you want to read a book, say a library book in PDF format or something like that? There's what it looks like. A little too tiny to read, don't you think? Now you can do zoom up to 300%. You can set your contrast a little darker, which I've already done, and you can switch screen rotation, which is advisable if you actually want to read a book because if you go up to 150%, you're not going to be reading in quadrants. So I'll switch to landscape mode. Uh huh. Actually readable now. And the page turn speeds are pretty good. So you can actually go through a book like that. I don't know if I, I would really recommend reading PDFs this way. It's up to you. But library books and text-based PDFs actually do become readable in landscape mode. Now we'll check out the web browser, which is still under the experimental section. And really, it's a pretty fast and capable web browser. Here it is on our own site right now. Now you might want to choose to switch this to landscape mode for best viewing, but it's pretty fast. It's usable. And you've got a virtual cursor here using the D-pad, again, much like the Kindle 3. But, you know, it's e-ink. It's grayscale. It's not like you want to use this as a substitute for a colored LCD-based tablet or computer, but it's good for looking at things in the Wikipedia. If we hit the menu button, you can see you can enter a URL or you can just move your cursor up there if you want to do that. You can zoom in, zoom out. You can try out article mode, which is really best viewed for article-based things and not a home page, but it tries to pick out the text. Re-rendering it, and the speed are pretty good there. And this will be your best friend on this device, your list of bookmarks, because you won't have to retype in URLs. Again, standard Kindle stuff. The Kindle software version is 4.0. That said, there is not a huge difference between this and the 3.2 or 3.3 that's running on the Kindle keyboard. The settings are pretty much the same as is the feature set. In terms of size comparison, here's the Kobo Touch, one of the smaller e-readers on the block. This Kobo Touch is obviously touchscreen, given the name, but they're about the same size, and the Kindle is a little bit thinner. So in terms of portability, the Kindle certainly is very portable. If you want to shop for books directly on the device, you choose Shopping Kindle Store. Using your Wi-Fi connection, you can browse the bookstore. And again, this is pretty much like previous Kindles. You can go by category, books, magazines, newspaper, look at feature, like New York Times bestsellers. And you get to see covers of books that they suggest. If you want to see more about a book, just click on it. And you can buy it. You can have a sample sent to your Kindle or you can add it to your wish list. Amazon does right now have the largest bookstore, so you have a very wide selection of books to choose from, not to mention magazines and newspapers. Those won't have the pretty layout that you see on a, a tablet or on the Nook color, but you will get the words and some basic grayscale images. As with previous Kindles, this supports the Kindle format. It supports Mobi. It does not support EPUB, no, even though it now does library books from public library lending. No EPUB here, and it does PDFs, obviously, as we've seen. And if you want to check out a book, an e-book e from your public library, it's pretty easy. You, you browse using your computer the way you do now. When you want to check out a book, if you choose the Kindle format, what's going to happen is this going to get sent to Amazon's Kindle server, and then that's going to send you a compatible format here. 
So no have, having to hook up via USB, no using Adobe Digital Editions like you do in EPUB readers, just does it that way. Now other readers like the, the upcoming Sony reader are going to have a pretty slick setup where you can actually use the web browser on the device to check out a library book and then send it directly to your device without involving your computer at all. But that's Amazon's method that uses their server as an interim. Now in theory you could also use the browser on this to, to browse your, your library to get some books too. Uh, the browser is certainly capable enough, it's just a bit tedious without either a hardware keyboard or a touch screen to go through the whole process, but you could do that. And the, the browser supports uh, standard single window view. It still does not support pop-up windows, but most public libraries using Overdrive don't use pop-up windows for login, so that should work. The device has 1.4 gigs of available storage. That might not sound a lot like a lot, but that is a lot of books and even a reasonable number of big, fat, chunky PDFs. And it has no expandable storage, there's no micro SD card slot or anything like that. Of course, Amazon has their cloud backup, and even now if you use their service to send books to the device, it backs that up in cloud storage for you. So if you delete a book that you used Amazon's Mail-to service for, for one of your own personal books or documents and you delete off the device, then you can still retrieve it from Amazon's cloud server. You can sideload books using USB. It's pretty easy. You just plug in the included cable and drag books to the Kindle as it appears on your desktop and you just put them in your documents folder on the Kindle. Amazon says that this is good for a month of use with Wi-Fi turned off um, and that's estimated based on reading for 30 minutes a day. It's too new for us to say if it's going to make it a whole month. We do tend to read more than 30 minutes a day on it and need Wi-Fi on some of the time. But based on the Kindle 3, which tended to last me about three weeks, and Amazon claimed up to two months, and I'm a pretty heavy reader and I leave Wi-Fi on a lot, I would say that this guy is probably going to be good for two to three weeks if you leave Wi-Fi mostly off and you read for an hour to two a day. With the ink, it only consumes power when you turn the pages. Just displaying this page right here will not use any power. And Wi-Fi is, in general, the biggest consumer of power on ebook readers that are e-ink based. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is Amazon's latest Kindle, the $79 Kindle. Be sure to visit our website to read the full review.